and German's Junkie Podcast, episode 101, brought to you by Health IQ, an insurance company that helps health conscious people get special life insurance rates. Go to healthiq.com forward slash junkie to support the show and learn more. Hey Junkies, what's up? Thanks for joining me on a new episode of the Endurance Junkie Podcast. The show where I will be interviewing some of the fastest, smartest and most inspiring people active in the endurance world today. Now before we get going, I would like to thank Health IQ for supporting. Now many people in the endurance community have had trouble with how much they pay for their life insurance. And despite their own health conscious lifestyle, they might get penalized for family history, BMI and stuff like that. Well, Health IQ has decided to change all that, and they use science and data to secure lower rates on life insurance for insurance junkies. Like saving money on your car insurance for being a good driver, Health IQ saves you money on your life insurance for living a healthy lifestyle. Now to see if you qualify and get a free quote, just head over to healthiq.com forward slash junkie. That's healthiq.com forward slash junkie. And maybe you can save over $1,000 on your yearly premium. Right on today's show, um, John Ackland is a world-renowned training strategist who specializes in program design and planning for high-performance athletes. A former national rowing champion and Ironman triathlete himself, John has over 20 years of experience in helping athletes like triathlete Terence Bottoni, the New Zealand All Blacks rugby team, and uh, several America's Cup yacht crews to achieve peak performance. So hi John, thanks for uh, coming on the show today. Yeah, can you start off by telling us a bit about yourself and uh, yeah, your own sporting background? Okay, so uh, so th thanks for having me on first, Peter. And um, yeah, so my, my background uh, started with me at high school um, uh, doing athletics and being kind of okay at it. Um, uh, but it really kind of helping me feel confident as a, as a kid. Uh, and then I uh, went into rowing and uh, rowed for quite a, a number of years and was reasonably successful, you know, open um, uh, open class, uh, lightweight national champion in rowing. Um, and then I got glandular fever and got very, very sick, <laughs> uh, really sick for quite a while. And, uh, and when I came out of that, I had watched this thing on TV about these crazy people doing uh, these long distance swimming, biking and running events. Oh, yeah, and I guys, thought, yeah. wow. Yeah. And I thought, wow. You know, I think the first race I watched was, uh, Scott Tinley and Mark Allen racing in Nice. Okay. And, uh, and that was it. I was just, I was going to do Ironman, uh, uh, you know, as soon as I possibly could. Um, so yeah, so then I, then I went on to do, to train for Ironman. I, I did the New Zealand Ironman, which I think was the third running of the New Zealand Ironman, which was, I think the only, that was the first Ironman ever uh, created outside of Hawaii. Yep. And yeah, so I did the, the third running of that. Uh, wetsuits were in for the very first time. There weren't any aero bars. <laughs> so it was, it was pretty, uh, pretty different from now. Um, yeah. And uh, it went to Hawaii twice. So I was, you know, felt, you know, felt quite honored at that, but never was super fast. I was good, but never super fast. And I guess what that caused me to, to, to think about was, well, how do I use smarts to, to go faster? And uh, that got me into um, sports science, and then I worked for the New Zealand Institute of Sport, and was very lucky to work with you know some of the you know the, the New Zealand All Blacks and the and the you know America's Cup and and all kinds of uh, you know the top New Zealand sports, New Zealand cricket, all that sort of stuff. And then I started this company called Performance Lab, and and uh, you know I have this passionate obsession, which is pretty much 24 hours a day, where uh, I can't stop thinking about how how to make people go faster, um, which has been quite a good obsession, I, I, I find. And I've been doing that for 30 years, don't know how to do anything else. <laughs> okay. okay. So the fact that you started coaching was really because you, you had your own um, – you, you, you were intrigued by, by yeah, what could help you go faster. And, and is, is that what yeah. led you into, into coaching? Yeah. yeah, and interestingly, what happened was that it was just at the start – this is the – this is 80 – would have been 87, 88. 
And what was just starting to become uh, known in New Zealand is that we had uh, Arthur Lydiard's principles, which were the, um, which are, you know, kind of foundation principles of endurance sport. Mm -hmm. But what was also happening was a lot of the uh, information uh, on periodization from Tudor Bomper and a, and a number of the, Matt Beev and a, num a number of the top sports scientists overseas, that was starting to come into the country too. And uh, I think I was lucky to have uh, looked at that sort of information probably earlier than most. And then with my exercise experience, you start to understand, wow, there's a few things here we can do that are, um, that are you know, at least theoretically pretty clever. And uh, so started sort of uh, playing with that and, and testing that on myself, which I've done all through my life, really, is, is everything, everything I test on myself. Um, and uh, yeah, and that, that, uh, that turned out to be pretty successful. You know, Performance Lab, uh, in its coaching phase, it's now more of a technology company, but in its coaching phase, you know, we had a, uh, uh, a one-month uh, waiting list to c come, come and see us for consultation. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, always been, uh, it's always been a very uh, exciting area for me. <laughs> So has it always been easy to get clients as, as a coach? In the beginning, I can imagine like, you know, 20 years ago, coaching wasn't really that big like, like it was today. Yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really interesting question. Uh, in fact, a very good question so far, actually. Um, so so we, we started up, we started Performance Lab, which was, I think, and I might be wrong, but uh, the first commercial sports science lab uh, that I knew of, at least in the world. And... Um, and we, we had a bit of a process to, uh, you know, uh, to, to get people through the door. And, and yeah, that, that went incredibly well. It, it, we had, we, we're mainly consultants rather than uh, stand on the, on, the, on the sideline and coach type people. Um, so, yeah, so we more, uh, more, more consult people. And this was, you know, this was kind of before the sort of the Internet was big and all that sort of stuff. So we were kind of coaching people overseas by uh, mail and all kinds of uh uh, weird things, but yeah, no, it went it went very very well for us, and um, yeah, and 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 learned learned a lot, and wasn't hard to get get athletes uh, all the way through. But I think part of that was that we were lucky in that we we had a good product that seemed to be going well, and we got our marketing uh, pretty well sorted out too. Um, yeah, and it all just kind of fell into place. It, it you know over those years it it felt. It felt yeah it was it was very exciting and and felt pretty easy to to to, to work with uh, athletes okay. and it wasn't just purely endurance athletes you trained like the, the rugby men as well and, and, and rowers and stuff like that well that that was more when i was working for the institute of sport uh okay. but we, but when we went up into our own company then it was mainly endurance sports but but i have a bit of a passion for anything that requires a a, a bit of thinking so i've worked with uh, you know, transatlantic uh, rowers and, um, you know, America's Cup and, uh, you know, people walking to the South Pole and all kinds of, you know, things where you've got to kind of think things through and then come up with a plan. Yeah, okay. Well, then you touched on it before. I mean, there's a, a lot of information uh, out there. And then, of course, training as well. Training principles have changed over the years. and A lot of research has been done these last couple of decades. Uh, how has your own training philosophy changed over the years? Um, let's take, for example, uh, you, you've you've been coaching Terenzo Bozzoni, I think, from 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 the beginning of his career. So, I think he's been racing at the elite level uh, for about fifteen years. Um, yeah, do you train him differently today than than you did in his early years? Yeah, ab absolutely. And I, I think there's there's a, there's a bunch of things, and 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 um, probably the first thing I would say is that. You know, when I first started uh, co coaching, I was all about the numbers. You know, the periodization, the program. You know, what all the numbers were. But but I think that as you kind of reach a level of, of competence, you then you then start to think, hey, you know, you can have two people who are almost exactly the same, give them the same program, and get completely different results. So then then I started to understand that you know the the psychological components for that. And I think that they have a, a, a massive effect on performance, particularly at the elite level. Um, so there's that. And then, I, and then I guess the other thing is um, understanding, you know, the way I define coaching is find the two, you know, one or two weakest points that you can find in the, in the, in the person at the time and then fix those and then find the next two weakest points and try and fix those and just, and just keep going through that process. 
And uh, so understanding what somebody needs at any given point in time is more important than anything. And part of that psychological and part of that's training. Uh, and they've both got to be used because, uh, yeah, you just don't get the same kind of results um, with just one or the other. So it's always a case of really tailoring to the individual? Yeah, yeah. So, so for instance, if you have a situation where, where somebody is incredibly well trained, but they have no understanding of something, say, like process focus, which is, I'm sure, sure you know, but, but just to say it, uh, is, you know, um, focusing on the steps you need to take rather than worrying about whether you're going to win or lose. Mm -hmm. And, and what, I, what I always say about process focus is, you know, if you if you're outcome focused, you'll always uh, uh, panic when you're behind and feel like you're winning the race when you're in front. Whereas if you've got somebody uh, who's process focused, what will happen is when they're behind, they, they know that, that the fact that some people are up ahead doesn't necessarily mean anything. Or if they're in front, that doesn't necessarily mean anything either. And particularly in Ironman racing, you know, if you're in a, uh, you know, in Kona, you know, and you get to look out hill on the way back and, you know, the bunch clears out. Um, what does that mean? And, you know, you can draw some conclusions from that, but you shouldn't panic. And you can have somebody who's incredibly well trained, but unless they understand how to actually handle themselves in those crisis situations, um, you won't get a good outcome. So how do you train somebody like that who's got really that um, that mindset of, of um, yeah wanting to win at all costs a bit and, and not focusing on on the process? How do you switch that mentality? Well, ideally, ideally, the uh, one of the things that's really important I think in coaching is what they call conversational style, which is how you talk to somebody, and and through through somebody's career, uh, if you've talked to them in a process focused manner the whole way, then it'll it'll be embedded. The tricky thing is when you've got somebody that you that you're working with that has spent their whole life outcome focused, and then you're trying to get them uh, to switch, and and that's not an easy thing. And the reason is that you can explain the logic of it, which is which is that you know uh, you just go through the steps that you need to go through, and don't worry about what other people are doing necessarily. There are some tactics to that, but but you know other than that, don't worry too much about about what other people are doing, and just keep optimizing yourself. It's easy to say that. But what happens is that when people are in a crisis situation where they're being dropped or whether they, you know, they have a flat tire or whatever it is, that's the point where they get pushed up against the wall and then their default behavior comes comes into practice. And you can understand, you know, a, a concept theoretically, but when you're in a crisis situation, you'll just go back to your default behavior. So you've got to embed uh, the thinking to such an extent that when the crisis occurs, they engage in the appropriate behavior. And, and the difference between that can be the difference between pulling out of a race and winning it. It's, 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 it's that massive. Um, so, so, you know, I used to think that the numbers that you did, all the volumes and the and now, a number of minutes of intensity and all that sort of stuff used to be the most important thing. But now I realize that it's actually uh, not anywhere near as big as I used to think. No. Okay. Now, there, there's so many coaches out there, and and uh, yeah, I think when we all go on, on social media, we get flooded by, by advice and by by uh, training plans and stuff like that. So, um, what advice would you give to to somebody who's out looking for a coach? Yeah, it's it's an interesting one because I think it it also applies to um, kind of working, you know, it, it, when you're working with the coach, not just not just um, not just choosing them. And I think I think the big test is that. If uh, if you talk to somebody and the answers are simple and uh, they make you feel good and you can and you can you know hopefully you have a bit of a revelation about about what you what's happened there uh, and then you can go out and easily execute it that tells you you've got a good coach I think the way you know that you haven't got a good coach and and or all the other people that are talking in in your ear when you're at carbo loading parties and stuff is if the concepts that they're giving you are very, very complex uh, and they are, they are generally not about kind of um, working with what you've got and you walk away feeling either conflicted or confused, then you're on the wrong. And that doesn't just apply to listening to a coach. That applies to all the voices that you hear 
you know, every time you're in the pool, every time you're out, out on your bike, every time you're in the at the carbo loading party, it's really important that you pick a couple of people that you trust and you listen to them and action what they say. Because that's the other thing is that what, one of the things that's interesting that you find out about coaching is some people will action what you say and some people will filter it. And you'll, you'll never get a good result unless there's a, an agreement between the athlete and the coach as to what you're doing rather than the coach saying something, you doing something different and the coach then trying to make decisions with you but not understanding what you've actually sort of sneak, sneaked off to do. <laughs> okay. So it's really, it's really important that, that, that yeah, you, you, you trust. Without trust, you know, I think coaching falls over. So is that the, the main reason why that relationship with Terenzo has been going on for, for such a long time? Because you hear a lot of stories, like a lot of triathletes, and they spend like two, three years with one coach, and then they go to another coach for a couple of years, and they switch again. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't, I can't comment for Terenzo, but but what I, what I, uh, from my perspective, I mean, I've always, I mean, we've always uh, done our best for each other. That's always been the driver. It's not about winning or losing. It's about doing your best for the other person. And I think that whether it's whether it's a sports thing or whether it's a life thing, if one of us was in the jam, I think the other one would would uh you know look after the guy you know the other person's back to some extent um yeah and and, I, and the thing i'm really pleased about about with terenzo is you know not only is he at a point where i think he's going to be hopefully you know pretty devastating in the next few years because i think where he's at in his career is 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 very exciting um the other thing i think is that with all the stuff that that you know terenzo and i've learned together if he's in some other tight, um, tight situations later in his life, which have nothing to do with sport, I think he'll be good. And uh, as a coach, you know, if he if he knows what he's doing, and he's going to be you know a high quality person, and he's going to go out there and and uh, race in a both a successful and dignified way, then you feel like you've you've done done the job, you know. So yeah, I'm very very pleased for him. Yeah, it's all geared towards uh, a big performance in Kona uh, these couple of, uh, next couple of years. Yeah, I think I think there's it's 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 uh, he's getting to a point where he knows what he needs to know. Now you've got to have the situation where you know you uh, have the right kind of day, you have the right kind of opportunities. Um, but I would say that from this point onwards given the right opportunity yep Terenzo can do it easy yeah no, no, yeah I think he sort of reminds me a bit of of Maka he had a, a couple of tough uh, races in, in Kona before he actually cracked it and uh, yeah, I think uh, it's the same thing with Terenzo he's had some, some shocking results there but finally came through last year with a, with a very solid performance and that, that will definitely help him uh, in the next couple yeah. of years no doubt yeah you know, Ironman is a is, is a very complex event I think because you end up in a situation where um, as I'm sure you know, is that, you know, you get to the 20 kilometer mark in the bike, sorry, in the run. And, um, you know, what happens from there is, is, uh, um, it's just, it's a very, very hard emotionally, psychologically and physical, um, sort of task at that point, particularly at the top level, because even a split second of weakness and you're gone. Um, so how you manage yourself at that point takes a little bit of learning, uh, I think at the top level. I mean, some people get lucky, but, um, I don't think that that's uh, a common thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, well, definitely going to look out for him in the next couple of years. Um, yeah. tell us a bit more about that. Yeah. About performance lab, but where it is now, you said it was a coaching business before it's more of a software or an IT, uh, company now. Um, yeah. yeah what, so what, what's, so, what services do you guys have and, and, and who's it for and, and what do you guys do? Yeah. Well, so, so maybe, maybe the, the background is that, so we're a software company and the, and the reason that we, we uh, have gone down this road is, you know, it's, it's, it's just another stage of learning basically is that you end up in a situation, particularly if you're, you know, coaching people around the world and you live in a, you know, in the bottom of bottom of the world in New Zealand, it's, um, it's hard to uh, know, how the athletes going um 
and you end up with all this data streaming into your computer all the time, and then it's it's just this massive uh, tangle of you know heart rates and power outputs and terrain and speed and you know and cadence and all kinds of crazy stuff and you and 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 trying to sort of fix that and understand it is is uh, has always been my thing and what what's happened over the last few years is we're reaching a point now with the with the mobile phone and with the the, the sensors and the connectivity between the sensors and enough processing power on the phone and the fact that you've got cloud services and all of those things coming together that a whole new sort of revolution in um how how exercise data is processed and used, uh, you know, I think is is possible. And so so what we've been doing is building um, various products for uh, either other companies to to uh, incorporate in their products, and we're also going to be producing our own uh, stuff in the next little while. And, you know, and and it's, the the idea is sort of some sort of seamless high quality experience. So for instance. Uh, first thing I'd like is a, a program, but I'd like a, a very customized program, and I'd like it to be able to adapt me to be able to move stuff around. So, so, uh, so we've got that. And then the second thing is that if I'm going to go and exercise, that the first thing I need to know is what my training intensities are. So we've developed one of the first automated ways of working out your training zones just as you exercise. So we've got that. And then the next thing is that we have this thing where we can auto detect every behavior you're doing when you're out exercising. So if you're out running and you decide to do a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of this and a bit of that, and you decide to do it, you know, either early in the workout or late in the workout or the middle of the workout or wherever, we can detect it and we know what's going on and it's already chopped up for you and all of that summarized in real time uh, as, you, as you're out exercising. And the other thing that we have is that we are the very first people in the world to be able to give you uh, cardiovascular uh, fitness change measured on a day-to-day -day basis. Nobody else can do that. So if you, you know, there are some people that say they can do that, but none of them can actually do that. If you go through the details, uh, we uh, something else that we can do. So it's trying to create a, a seamless thing where, you know, you go for a run, so you've got your program, you move, you decide you're going to do your long run today, so you move it to here. The whole program auto-optimizes for that. Uh, it downloads onto your phone. You go out for your run. It knows what your training zones are. It knows what you're doing. Tells you how compliant you are with the program. Tells you what you've got to do next. Tells you if you're overdoing it or if you're underdoing it. If you get tired, it tells you that. When you finish the workout, it gives you a summary of that, gives you some analysis of that, and also um, tells you sort of whether or not your performance has gone up or not. And, uh, you know, and for me anyway, is if that all happened all in one package and, and it happened with my athletes all in one package, then um, that's what excites me. <laughs> then that's already something that's available now? The some parts that are available now and some parts will become available in about the next six months. Okay, and that's mm. the stuff that you're going to bring out yourself, or is that in partnership with other uh, brands and, and, and products? Uh, in both, both. So, um, so, but there'll be uh, yeah, and and you'll be able to connect other people's sensors to our stuff as well. So, uh, so yeah, so that's all uh, been uh, prototyped, tested. Software's been built. Now what we have to do is just build a um, build it into a into a uh, 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 an, an app. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, where can people mm. f find out more information uh, if they want to? I just go to uh, www.arda.ai, and um, that's the best place to look at uh, what's going on there. And yeah, you know, and, and the other thing is that we're looking for people who are interested in uh, testing for us as well. So um, you know, you know, we want to work with uh you know we're interested you know we've always been interested in endurance, endurance athletes and we want to work with endurance athletes so you know if if somebody has any uh anything on their wish list or or wants to do some testing for us uh we're super keen on that and that's on all levels or you're looking for uh, elites or uh we're, we're looking we're looking for everybody we're, we're going to tailor the um the app to probably the more upper end to start with mm -hmm. um but in the end, uh, the basic principles apply across the board. We would just change the sort of the experience and the interface uh, uh, depending on, 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 on the quality. So, yes, we're looking for all, all kinds of people. Yeah. Okay, cool stuff. Well, I'll put, definitely put the links up on, on the show notes page and uh, how to get in touch with, with you if they, if they want to. Um, Thanks. Yeah, with, with all the coaching that you've done uh, in your career so far and, and uh, I guess there's been numerous victories and, and, and titles, uh, 
that that you've uh, amassed there. But um, are there like specific things that you still want to accomplish yourself? Well, I mean, I guess that's why that's why Arda was built. Um, I, I, I'd like you know, I'd like to you know, I, I think there's it's time to revolutionise how we deal with um, data in sport. Um, so that's my you know, that's my current current passion. Um, uh, and, you know, and, and I guess it's it's still about, because uh, I still work with a small group of, 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 of athletes, and it's still about, you know, uh, seeing these, seeing people learn something, execute something, and, uh, and, and basically change kind of the realities of, of what would have happened if they, you know, if they hadn't had the information to start with. So, yeah, so I'm passionate. I'm passionate about, still really, really passionate about coaching, and really passionate about, uh, you know, creating a bit of a revolution. Hopefully, in the, um, in the, uh, you know, the data area. Yeah, and you still find some mm. time to do some uh, some sports yourself? Yeah, yeah. I actually, uh, <laughs> when we've been testing our our uh, cardiovascular status um, measure m- measurement system, uh, twice last year I deliberately overtrained myself because I still. I still cycle and I run mm-hmm. primarily, a bit of swimming, but cycle and run primarily and test everything on myself. Um, yeah, I ended up quite sick after the um, <laughs> after the second shot of overtraining myself because <laughs> it turned out I did a pretty good job of training myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, we learn. <laughs> All right. Well, cool stuff. Well, thanks, uh, thanks so much for your time and, and, and for your wisdom. Um, yeah, how can people get in touch with you if they want to? Uh, we've got the, the website, the Arda, uh, but uh, any other places where people can uh, get in touch with you? Yeah, I think if you can also use uh, www.performancelab.co.nz. Um, so either one of those two, you can get in touch with us. Yeah, so there's still we still do a little bit of coaching. Um, not, not a lot, but a little bit. And uh, as I say, if there's people who would like to, um, you know, help us uh, – help us with our, you know, revolutionizing uh, sports data, we'd be uh, super keen to uh, hear from people. Yeah, okay, cool stuff. Uh, mm. Do you got some partners or something that you that you work with as well that you want to uh, plug here? Uh, no, no, I think I think that, that, you know, we talked about the product, so no, no, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool stuff. One final yeah. question to, to finish it off. Um, if you could sit on a bench on a nice park there in, in New Zealand... Uh, overlooking the ocean um yeah and you can chat with anyone from the past or the present uh who would it be well I, what says so somebody has already come to my head so so, so I, I can i answer it in two parts sure so so the first because because you've actually hit on a very um something i'm very passionate about so it would be michael jordan okay um and the reason for that is his ability to i mean jordan was very talented but he could also dominate any game and he also had to learn how to be a leader. And I think that combination really interests me. And then the second thing is that, you know, it's a, it's a thing I've been very passionate about in my life where we've also had, um, uh, used to have a radio show where we used to interview uh, all kinds of people. And um, that was pre podcast like, times, right? It was pre podcast times. And, um, and, uh, and so, so if I could, I'd like maybe, maybe 10,000 benches and to sit with 10,000 different people because I think everybody there's so there's so much uh, real practical I've been there information out there that um, yeah I'd like to listen to lots of people <laughs> yeah. maybe it's time Michael, to bring to bring the show back and uh, start your own podcast maybe, again maybe so my, Michael but Michael Jordan first because I think the, the leadership and the domination thing was an interesting thing to watch in his career. Yeah, yeah definitely. It was uh, an inspiration to a lot of people. and Yeah, it would be a cool podcast to listen to uh, or a cool chat to listen to. All right. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for your time, John. Much appreciated. No worries, Peter. My junkies, thanks for listening to this uh, episode with John Ackland. Now, if you like these little shows and uh, don't want to miss any future episodes, just head over to iTunes or Stitcher and simply subscribe to the show. Uh, I would also like to thank everyone who has left a rating and review there. Uh, It's much appreciated. And if you haven't done so yet, yeah, please consider leaving me one as it will help grow the show. We're also on Spotify, so uh, if you want to listen there, uh, you can always uh, 
Search for Endurance Junkie Podcast in the search bar and you will find me no problem. Thanks again for listening and I hope you'll join me next time. Cheers. Thank you.